You're at your old trusty boat. You call my tea sparrow. I'm in the city of Mardi Gras. Welcome to the Sailing into Oblivion podcast. I'm your host, Jerome Rand, and this is where we sit down with everyday people who do extraordinary things. Hey, everybody, coming to you right after work here up in Rockland, Maine. And uh, I actually got to sit down with Dave, one of my buddies here at the yard. He's worked here for many, many years, I think probably a decade. And we're going to sort of get into a little bit about, um, I don't know, this or that, mostly about hauling boats and how to prep your boat and I don't know, a little bit of pertinent information, which is always nice, and a couple of little little gems here and there. Dave is uh, an exceptional human being by any evaluation. Uh, he's He's been uh, just hilarious and fun to work with and uh, keeps, keeps this job very interesting. I know I've talked about that quite often in the past, about how no matter what you're doing, if you've got good people that you're working with that uh, can make the job that much better and he exemplifies that for sure so i brought him in for a quick quick little podcast Uh, i didn't want to take up too much of his time he's also a family man and when he finishes this job he goes right back to that one and so you know just grabbed him for for a little bit right after work and and we sort of get into it but um i am going to just uh, tomorrow morning, we got put off a little bit by a few extra boats thrown on the schedule. So we're going we're gonna to pull that mast out tomorrow. But it's actually the timing is just going to be just about perfect because that storm in the Atlantic that's uh, heading up north now is, uh, I, I think it's, it might be Hurricane Fiona or something like that. But it's actually going to do a pretty close call with uh, good old Maine up here, which hasn't happened in quite some time. I, I got to find out from my my other buddy who's lived up here for his whole life and uh, see when was the last time they actually got a hurricane here in Maine. But it looks like we're we're tomorrow is going to rain like crazy because there's sort of a cold front coming off the Canadian Shield. And then, oh, it looks like the storm already is starting to track further away, which would be great. Because essentially, Rockland Harbor, we can handle westerlies, we can handle northwesterlies, we just can't handle the uh, northeasterlies because that comes right into our harbor. But it does look like the center of this thing is going to go right into uh, the eastern edge of Nova Scotia. So that's going to be some pretty ugly ugly weather out there and we're we're definitely going to get some westerlies and some rain and everything but i don't know there's one forecast predicting gusts up in the 50s which isn't too bad uh, i'm glad i'm not in the water but i'm even more glad that i'm pulling my mask down not so much for safety or anything like that but really just for the fact that it'll cut the wind noise out quite a bit but it is pretty interesting it's almost uh, amazing to be in a boatyard when it's blowing 50 or 60 knots because every halyard, no matter how tightly done it is, starts to slap against the mast. And uh, essentially you are listening to a cacophony of that sound all around you. And boats have to be checked and, you know, the the people who have put their own little covers on made out of tarps, you know, bought at the local shop. Typically those tend to uh, start letting loose. So it's going to be an exciting couple of days up here, but hopefully this storm will actually follow the predicted track and stay a little bit away from us. The worst possible scenario would be that for whatever reason, it takes a, uh, a turn over to the West and decides to smash right into Maine. That would not be good. That wouldn't be good at all. But we're going to have quite a few boats to haul out, and we've got a lot of checks to do throughout the yard to make sure everything is 100% rock solid before this thing uh, actually makes landfall. So we'll be pulling the, the mast off tomorrow. The crane's already in position, and that's that's pretty cool. And I just wanted to go over some of the things that I prep to be able to make the pulling of the mast a very smooth operation. 
<clears throat> so down below any wiring that's going up that's already been disconnected so that it's not one of those things where the yard guys get everything sorted and you're down there fiddling with the VHF cable and the GPS, you know, all these little things. So all the wires are already done. All the halyards are also taken out from any uh, blocks or pulleys that are mounted on the deck so that the mask can just freely come up. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll dust in the throat. And I have, I've actually preemptively pulled the cotter pins, which are those little split pin deals that uh, hold the actual big stainless steel pins in to hold all the stays and the wires that hold the mast. I have already pulled those out and eased my turnbuckles. Uh, I don't recommend that because it might be just a little too far for your average person to go and do before the crane is actually attached to your mast, but you can at least squash them down to the point where they can be pulled very easily. And then if you have turnbuckles that also have those cotter pins in them as well, you can definitely pull those suckers out so that if we have to ease the turnbuckles, which we almost always have to do, that can be done very quickly and easily. What you do not want to do, absolutely do not want to do ever is start pulling pins even if you have like mighty sparrow has two back stays two four stays six size stays so that's a lot of stays i could probably lose a couple of them just to speed it up even more but i'm not going to do that you never want to do that always keep all your stays attached until the crane is actually attached to the mast and then you're going to go ahead and, and jump right in the other thing is have a nice little bucket or a, uh, a Ziploc bag, something like that, to be able to put all your pins in, gather them up in one place, maybe have a few, uh, few tools around if you want to make sure we're not using um, channel locks or something like that. It's always better to use an adjustable wrench and, uh, and all that to keep, those, keep all those chain plates and turnbuckles and everything looking really nice. But uh, yeah, and if you've, got, if you've got white rigging tape all over everything, go ahead and peel all that off. Just think... Think of all the things that you can do and do those to get them out of the way just to make things uh, run a little faster. The guys in the yard will definitely appreciate it. And um, yeah, it'll just make it uh, that much better. So that's my little top tip, tidbit and all that sort of stuff. Other than that, um, yeah, we're just plugging away here in the haul out season. And it is it is kind of an interesting juxtaposition uh, as far as compared to the launch season. For me personally, I really enjoy the launch season because the pressure is on to get as many of these boats out. And again, we're up here in Maine, so we definitely, the, the season is very short. So there's a, a month and a half or two months of launch, 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 and then a nice little dry spell, and then it's haul, haul, haul. And when these storms are starting to cook up out in the Atlantic, you never know. You might get a extreme haul session. I, I believe I've heard they've hauled up to 100 boats in a day or something like that. I don't know if that's true, but I will find out. In any event, it just, you know, for me, it really is the beginning of summer. The adventure is starting for everybody, and I love it. I can see it in their eyes and the excitement and all that. The haul out season sort of, it, it can be kind of nice because you do get to hear some of the stories that people have have sort of experienced and the things that they did for the season and everything like that. But it's it's the close down. It's the finale. Everybody's, you know, getting ready to hunker down for the winter, close their boats up. And for me, this is the time to get ready to splash, get in the water and get south to warmer weather and, and finer climates. So. I don't know. It's kind of a strange, strange brew of emotions that I go through. But pulling the mast off is going to be great because that's going to allow me to get a lot of these projects finished and uh, and at least underway. And that will hopefully give me an idea of exactly where I'm going to end up going. It's kind of I, I was starting to get a little panicky about having a destination, having a plan and all that. And then I don't know, somewhere last night or today, I just had a little moment of clarity, so to speak, where I, there's no reason to get all in a huff. I got a boat. Uh, I could go, 
I could mothball it. I could end up sailing south. I could go take a long offshore cruise. I got options. There's no stress. One way or the other, I'm going to be able to get out there. Or if I end up packing it up for the, the season up here, then, hey, you know what? The project list can just grow and grow. and We can really knock it out of the park next year. But we'll see. We'll come to that uh, when we come to it. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoy this little snippet from Dave and I. And, uh, yeah, until next time, thanks for listening. Oh, well, I got to always say it, but uh, if you want to support the podcast, which many of you do, and I am so, so thankful it's absolutely getting me towards the goal of getting some nice, new, upgraded microphones. And uh, that is my Patreon family just killing it. I really, really appreciate it. You uh, guys and gals have really uh, blown me away with your support. So very, very tip in the hat to you. But if we have any new people that want to support the podcast, the link will be in the description on Patreon. And then uh, also, if you want to reach out to the show, head over to sailingintooblivion.com, click the podcast button, and uh, you can email me directly. So thank you all very much. Check out the stuff on YouTube. I'm pumping out more and more videos and hopefully going to figure out this editing bug that I have. But uh, I'm going to give that a shot later on tonight. So enjoy the show and thanks for listening. Fucking See if bullshit. We can do that one more time. Bullshit. All right, we got you. Dave. Hi. Jerome here after a hard day of laboring. Worked harder than an ugly stripper today. <laughs> yeah, we did, didn't we? I took a lot of guff. I still feel okay about it, though. How's your ribs? Uh, my sternum is a little sore still. I think Dave here may have accidentally bruised a rib from his impressive strength and his over-affectionate hugs. I like hugs. <laughs> yeah, you do. They're good for the soul. I'll tell you, I, I've said it before on this podcast. This is the friendliest, most loving boatyard in the world, I it think. It really is. It's We're, a nice place. No other boat. Uh, can we use a coaster there? Thanks. Oh, Thanks, guy. I'm listening to me. dirt grind away on my beautiful veneer table here. Mm. Ah, well, I was hoping to sit down with you. Because, you know, we're, we're in, we've transitioned. We're no longer in launch season. That went great. We pumped those boats out. I mean, we did pretty good, right? Yeah, we did. Awesome. And now we are in haul season. Totally different feel. It's chaos. Well, and it is kind of. And there's, would you say there's more pressure now because you actually got to figure out where you're going to put boats? Absolutely. Because all the boats coming are bigger and bigger. So there's very few that we can put on the truck and stick in a hole somewhere anymore. So you have to really think through it a lot more because everything's going to be set with the lift. And that takes up a lot more space. What are the chances that it just turns into a jumbled mess? Very good. Yeah. Very good chance it's going to be a mess. Well, and, you know, I mean, whenever I see this place fresh where boats haven't been hauled or launched yet, I'm always like, holy cow, it looks pretty bad. But compared to the last few years, I think it looks, I mean, setting up a lot of the boats that never move, every boatyard's got them. The, now, I don't want to say derelict boats, but the boats where, they, you know, it's all the dreams have not come true yet, so to speak. Yeah. And those are at least organized pretty well, because I think that's the biggest nightmare come launch season. Having to unbury, move six boats to get to one boat is a little frustrating for me, personally. It makes my wires touch. <laughs> You're so soft-spoken. It makes my wires touch. Well, uh, so for our for our listeners, uh, let's. I think we got to focus this podcast just on, you know, because I've always said it. Remember when I came in and I was trying to improve customer relations and i i kept saying that you know for for a customer haul out and launch time are some of the most nerve-wracking times you can have because you know your boat's flying in the sky it's hanging on wires i don't know what's going on or at least i didn't used to i'm nervous i gotta pull in the slip or pull out of it and you know one of the things that makes it even worse is when 
the yard guys are yelling at you. <laughs> now, how do we how do we prepare people for you know what, what would you say is good advice for somebody who's going to go at this time of the year and go and get their boat hauled out? Come early, go over everything with whoever's running the yard so they can kind of walk you through it and. That'll, that should ease your nerves some if you've got a plan in place. You want to move that mic a little closer so we can get your beautiful voice? <laughs> oh, God. And we're back after a technical difficulty. So we were talking about advice from the master of the yard, David, over here, or I call him Dave Bit, when he's giving me a bunch of guff. <laughs> so most of the time. So I... Okay, let's, let's do... Let's just do full on. Like, I am... So I, I call up. Night Marine, and I'm like, hey, I got a West Sail 32, and it's only 32 feet long and no, not an inch longer, and I need to get hauled out, and I schedule it for today, or no, schedule it for tomorrow. What's my first step? First step, meet with the yard boss. So if I if I, I want to drive to the yard in person, face-to-face, -face, yeah. just, just a quick fiver. Yeah, and bring say, pictures of your boat. Ooh, okay, good point. So we can see what it looks like, because when you pick it up with the travel lift, you want to know where everything is. You want to know if the bow's real slopey, if the strap's going to slide. So if you where have a the picture shaft is of the boat that and when it's out of the water, when it's out of the water. Okay. So it kind of gives us a game plan on how to pick it up, where to pick it up. Do we have to tie the straps? Mm -hmm. Does it have to come out backwards? Do we have to pull the mast first because it won't clear? Do we have to pull the four stay out? Right. Is it deck stepped? These are all pertinent pieces of information that make the whole process go smooth. Yeah. And I think that's that's really the key uh, to sort of doing things in a timely fashion. But also, I think there's knowing that, you know, like the cable guy, there's a window. Yeah. If the yard tells you, you know, we're going to haul your boat at 11. There might be three or four other boats before you. That, that all have been told 11. And they, well, and that might not have their shit together right. at all. Yeah. And they're showing up and they're like, well, I didn't know that I had to take my sails down and I had to do this. And, and so they start blocking things up. Next thing you know, it's 12 o'clock and we go on lunch. And now you're waiting around till one and you're getting mad. And I'll tell you what, that's not a good thing. You start getting snippy. Oh. With old Dave Boone or any yard worker at any time. I don't know. What what do you think is worse? Getting snippy and sassy with somebody working in the yard or uh, trying to tell them what to do with things like cranes and <laughs> travel lifts. Because the other day, that was one of the best. Uh, we, Dave and I, were pulling a mast on a on a, a friendly guy's boat, and as we were tying up this big line, we got the you know the the cranes hooked up to it, and we we have to tie the line off at the bottom of the mast, and and uh, the owner started giving us a little advice on where we probably should tie that and. Dave chimed in just absolutely perfectly with uh, I can't I can't even remember what exactly he said. I asked him how many masts he pulls a year. <laughs> yeah, you probably could ask him how many he does a day. Yeah, or, yeah. <laughs> and that stopped him dead in his tracks. So that was he took it well. He took it very well. Well, and that's the other thing, you know. I I think honestly one of the things that uh, people don't understand is that the work we're doing is potentially very dangerous yeah you know lifting a, a 30 ton boat up into the air and uh, we do it pretty much every day so we have the experience and when somebody comes up and says well you know i usually do or i usually that and and all that sort of stuff it gets uh it's when yep. wires start touching that's when shorts start happening <laughs> start short now <laughs> But I would say that uh, we definitely have um, upped our service game in the last few years. Like, oh yeah, as far as as far as dealing with uh, with people, it seems like the vibe is a little bit nicer and friendlier. So we don't 
normally just get people coming in, guns blazing already. Yeah, it's pretty rare. Pretty rare nowadays. In Once, the past, twice though, a month. yeah, there were a few disgruntled uh, people that you always sort of knew were going to be like that. Yeah, and you're prepared for. Right, right. Okay, so I've come in and I've met with the yard manager. Is there any way to grease the palm, so to speak? Or is that... I've I've always felt like that's... Uh, I don't know. I, I feel like if somebody like tried to slide me 20 bucks and say, you know, I really need to get the boat out. I would probably be like, I wouldn't even consider that. No, that's uh, off putting. That is a little off putting, isn't you it? You grease it after we get the boat out. There we go. Yeah. And, and, and you that's much prior. It's kind of a red flag. A little bit. Like yeah. it's a little weird, right? Yeah. Normally I wouldn't think two thoughts. I'd be like, sweet money. Awesome. But no, there's an undertone there. Yeah. Of like, get ready, because I'm a real asshole, and exactly. I'm going to pay you now just so you don't really punch me in the face. Which doesn't matter either way. <laughs> I'll do it with the payment without it. it. No matter what. Oh, God. Equal opportunity. <laughs> so, we've met with the yard manager. The next thing is, uh-oh. Check it out, man. It might be an emergency. Dave's got a, a brood of small tempestuous children and uh, i would hate for him to miss any sort of opportunity uh oh it's actually our yard manager okay hopefully he doesn't get mad well, that we've already I'll moved the crane over to I brought the crane over. mighty sparrow Set it up, but yeah, we were supposed to actually haul the mast off of here today but i guess the air fine. some other things got in the way but we'll see. We'll get an update here from Dave here in a second. What does Chief want? Do we got to go do something? Nope. We're good. Okay. Thank goodness. Chief just wanted me to uh, look into getting a muffler for the travel lift. Oh, really? Yeah. A new one? Or does it not have one? Well, yeah, but when it backfired yesterday, yeah, it blew the baffles out in the muffler, so it's not breathing, so it won't rev up like it's supposed to. Oh. So that... we got to track one down, and they're a little bit uh, odd, so yeah, oh, I'm could sure. take a bit. What was that uh, bearing that had the great name? Trunion bearing. Trunion bearing. Yeah. That one is cool. Describe what that is for our listeners. Well, it's mind. just a... Uh, huge bearing that goes at the top of the travel lift so because you've got two beams on either side and then a beam coming across the front and that's all that holds it together so that trunnion bearing is up in the corner so that the lift can articulate and move over you know potholes or right crooked right. angles because if on. it was rigid and it took that much torque with a 30 ton boat in it yeah it would start stress fracturing the the steel right right so you've got that big bearing in there to kind of take the load of that it is a good name, though. Trunion bearing. Yeah. Sounds like, I don't know, when I hear trunion, I just think garden instantly. I don't know why. I do not. I, I have no, no idea. <laughs> um. Okay. Trying to keep on track. It's a little hard. My brain, uh, after work. It's a little fried. A little bit. Because, you know, like today, for instance... Uh, I don't know if you noticed, but, you know, Chief was, he his wires were touching so hard. And and just for the listeners, Chief is our uh, our yard manager. And we've nicknamed him Chief because he's Sergeant in Chief or Chief and Commander or whatever you want to call it. But he loves it. Anyway, he was a little a little hot, hot this morning. Wasn't yeah, happy. He's fired up all day. He's fired up. He's, you know, getting a little. Uh... So in that case, I have to counterbalance. And that's why I kick. I, you see me turn the enthusiasm like right to eleven, right from the get go. Oh, yeah. And uh, did it work? No, Chief Swires was still touching. <laughs> no, they weren't. <laughs> we got them all curled down. It was no, fun. he was fine. Once we get the last boat out, he kind of. Well, but it was one of those things where, and and I guess this goes into the top tips. If you change the day that you are going to haul out, and that fires him up. Well, and if it should, because I mean, in in essence, people are booking their haul outs sometimes days, weeks, months in advance. Who knows? And you fill up a slot with say five boats. Here in Maine, we've got a tide, right? Yeah. So 
and I explained this to him right as we were going to cast him off at the end. I was like, hey, let's just so you know, if you, you know, if you cancel your, your haul out and, you know, the ladies in the office say, you know, hey, yeah, we can haul you the next day. Like we have to haul all the other people first. And if we can't get to you, we can't get to you. Like we only have a certain amount of time. Yeah. Like we can't bump somebody else because you didn't. Because you were you too much of a. go. Sally to come in yesterday because well, it was blowing, was blowing 15. 15. Yeah. Whoa. What's it supposed to blow this weekend? Chief was saying 50, si 60. 50, 60, my butt. Yeah. Dude, no way. I'll bet you we might see Gust. And if that hurricane takes a little twerk to the uh, to the west, we might actually see some, some action up here. But I'm glad I'm going to have my mask down. Not so much that I'm scared, but I just, it's, it's, really way more quiet when you don't have it yeah i'm gonna go have to arrest a uh halyard on that freedom over there though five knots of breeze and it's ting 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 all night long that's no good yeah i don't like that um okay what other top tips can you think of for people to have a smooth show up early show up early be ready so if you yeah. you got your boat you show up if you can be on a dock nearby grade or a mooring, you're ready and you you know what you have to do. Oh, I'll, I'll give you a little top tip. Okay, and this one, I don't know. I guess it could go either way. So right now on my boat, I know that we're going to haul the mast out tomorrow. Now, I, I guess I wouldn't recommend this, but I've pulled all the cotter pins out yeah. that hold the big pins in that are holding the stays that keep the mast up. There's so much tension on that. They're yeah, coming out. I well, I guess for a, a a legality sort of sense, at least at least bend your cotter pins so that and make feel them, make sure they can slide right out. Uh, that helps so much. Like when we have to ease the turnbuckles, and this I guess more not hauling out but pulling out your mast. If you pull all the cotter pins out of all the turnbuckles and everything, it speeds the process up. I, I spend more time pulling those pins out than we do anything else Any with it. the rest of the yeah. mast. But so that one always sort of helps. But you don't at the same time don't get carried away. Yeah. What We've, happened with that one boat? Yeah, they uh pulled all the pins out, decided they were gonna help us out and took all the stays down before the crane was even attached to it, and the mast came down without help from the crane. Hey. And just ripped up through it was a keel step, but it was a small fiberglass boat and See, the that's... step sheared off in the keel and the mast mm. came right up through the the top of the boat. Nobody got hurt though. No, the the actually it was a husband and wife and the lady was probably three inches from when oh, the mast wow, kicked really? up from getting her face taken off. Jeez. So it ripped up lengthwise right through the boat. I mean, there was a six foot gouge where the mast. So the mast it fell forward. It fell forward and then it kicked, and, and the bottom of it went, ripped right up through the geez. top of the boat. That's I, you know, and it's one of those things you wouldn't think that a keel step mast would ever do that, but you never know. So hey, why not just wait till the crane's yeah. there? So don't Take get carried your away. Pins, don't loosen anything loosen anything up. Just pull your cotter pins out, have it ready. Once the rope's on it and we're attached to the crane, then you start loosening your stays. Yep. I pulling I, pins. I pulled all my halyards uh out of any blocks that are on the deck. Do you have any halyards left? No. Cause we gotta fly you up above the spreaders. But you can use your I got my you get, stairs. You get your stairs. Don't worry, David. Which I put very little faith in. Spider Man is here. I, I, I would I wouldn't go up It'll them for a million fun. dollars. They're so safe, guy. Yeah. They've got six pop rivets each. Yeah, pop rivets. Stainless steel pop rivets. Yeah. Well, I I feel them. They're pretty. You good. had three helpings of French fries for lunch. Don't forget. Well, it was Wednesday. It's hump day. Hump day. Got to get through it, you know. Somehow. <laughs> Uh, um all right what else I'm trying to think because this is this is one of those every once in a while i'll have somebody on the podcast who is an expert in their field you know mm -hmm. i'm hoping to get larik on here and peter beale and we got dave i'm no expert you are an expert how long you've been working in this yard uh nine years i i watch you drive a 
I don't even know what, I mean, it's a semi truck, right? Yeah, the big rig. The yeah. big rig yeah. within half an inch of things that are holding 15 ton boats up. And if you clip it, game over. Actually, I've seen you clip them, but you're like, nah, it's fine. Yeah. I don't know. You <laughs> just pull up a little bit. Good. Just, would you, I, that's the thing I don't understand. I mean, there's there's nerves of steel or there's just this precision and also a forethought that goes into moving that trailer, which is what, 40 feet? Yeah, 42. And so this trailer, the way you can get around a boat's keel and everything or in between it is the trailer is basically split in half. Yeah. And it goes up and down and it has the pads on it. But, I mean, having only backed under two boats, I think, I was just lucky to even get in there. Now, it didn't help that you were there. Well, you had a good teacher. my head off next I to me. I was helping you. I was very gentle. I, not really, though. <laughs> I didn't feel, <laughs> didn't feel very gentle when you were just like, nope, 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 nope. Try again. Try again. Pull your head out of your ass. <laughs> if you turn left, the trailer goes right. Uh, yeah, well, I know that, but everything happens so slowly with that trailer. Yeah, it takes a while to get it to swing, but once it swings, it, then you then, then you really got to be does. correcting. Yeah. So. yeah, I mean, it's almost like driving on ice in a way, and everything's in reverse. But, you know, you threw me in on the deep end, remember, because I was like, yeah. Once we once we launch all these boats, I said, well, can we drive the rig around without any boats on it? And you always said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And then we never did. And then the next thing I know, I don't know, we had some big boat on there. And you're like, you're driving. You're welcome. Yeah. I, well, but the thing is, I you know, I'm so full of adrenaline at that point. I'm not really learning anything. I'm just trying not to mess it up. You didn't hit anything. Well, that's true. And I've driven the travel lift once. Whew. That was exciting. But wouldn't it make sense as an instructor, David? And this is something I'm I not. Have. I, that's that's the thing. I'm not an instructor. Yeah, everybody likes to say <clears throat> that. I'm not. Well, I flat mean, flat out, I can I run would, the big rig. I'm not teaching anybody I, else how to I run it. I can confidently say you're not good at being an instructor, but that doesn't mean it, it can be taught. It can be learned. Yeah, YouTube it. <laughs> you get back to me. <laughs> get back to me. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do this weekend. Uh, yeah. I'll walk in, guys. I'll tell you what. I'm <laughs> driving the lift. Damn. Yeah, I've been watching YouTube videos all weekend long. I told a guy that after we pulled his mast, that big uh, Beneteau we had last year that we had to pull the stack in the water. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we pulled it, got him out or whatever, and he's like. You guys did really good. And I was like, yeah, that was our first time. We watched a YouTube video on lunch break and said, well, let's give it a try. What could go wrong? Yeah. His Not eyes much. got huge. And then he <laughs> caught on that I was just yanking his chain. Yeah, right. Oh, God. Well, that's the thing. You know, I, I would think I haven't. The only experience I've had experience with like maybe five other boat yards. Yeah. Where I'm either hauling my boat or other boats that I'm working for, things like that. And I've, I don't think I've ever really met like a jolly crew of yard guys. I'm not going to lie. Most of them, they, they, they look a little rough and tumble. They're not conversationalists and, uh, they're in a hurry, like a big, big hurry all the time. And I, I feel like we're not. Am I wrong? No. I mean, no, we're in a hurry. We've got to get things done. Well, we got to get things done, but... You start rushing, you start making mistakes. So well, we, just yeah, relax yeah. a little bit. And if you can't have fun at work, what the fuck's the point? Mm -hmm. See, that's why I remember I had that little meeting this morning. I said, hey, guys, you know what? We woke up. We all feel reasonably good. And let's cherish yeah. this. It's sunny out. Tomorrow, it's going to be raining. Tomorrow's going to be weird because it's day. Thong Thursday. Thong Thursday. Yeah, it's a team building exercise. <laughs> HR put on. Oh yeah, we've elected Dave as our HR representative here at at Night Marine. <laughs> it's gonna be great. Thong Thursday. Mm. Rain or shine. Rain or shine. I don't care if it's fifty degrees. Yeah, and it must be animal print of some sort. Oh, nice. Yeah. Cheetah, leopard. Yeah. Zebra. Even cow. Even cow. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I feel like you probably have one of those. That's why you it's mentioned possible. it. There's a twinkle in your eye now. 
Get Might up be to on the to county. Something. Go see Becky. Here we go. I'll be up there Friday. Mm. Yeah, I'll tell you what. You know, the the launch season went by like lightning. That went by real fast. Yeah. Then obviously taking off to go back to Michigan makes it seem even faster. But I mean, like I said, it's almost October. October is going to be kind of a miserable month to be working here as far yeah. as the cold and rain, the wind. And figuring out when you're going to leave and where you're going to go and what you're going to do. Yeah. Well, I'll, you know, I, part of me, I think just, I just want to go sailing, like take off, go east, run into Africa, go south, cross the equator and see where I go from there. I mean, I, the sails won't last going in the Southern Ocean for very long, but I can just like maybe touch it and then come back. I just want to get a couple, like three, four, five months out there, just kind of living. I just want to live. I just want to sail. I want to sail without any pressure, without anything. I'd really like to like do it without even doing any updates or where am I sort of things. Just sort just of go ghost mode. Completely cut off by that. It's so unfair to do that to my family. In your, in your 42 foot, 32 foot wet sail. Yeah, okay. Let's just hash this out. It's buddy. really 42 overall. You okay. got a bow sprit. You got this big stupid apparatus hanging off in it's, the stern of it. It's so, 42 so feet. Boomkin with, well, okay. Right now, I, I could actually extend it even further if I half lowered the rudder for the wind vane. That would be interesting. But if you guys measured this while I was gone, just to be jerks, how That's it is now. Did. 42. This, it came out to be 42 feet long. 42 feet. 10 feet longer. And we give you a little wiggle room there. Really? Yeah. It's probably closer to 43. 43 feet. Hmm. <coughs> well, you know what, though? What? Most marinas still, I even tell them, I'm like, I got a bow sprit and all this stuff, but it's a West Sail 32. And they're like, oh, it's Mighty Sparrow. And then they give me a discount. Really? No. I'm gonna charge. <laughs> I'm gonna charge you extra. I'm pretty sure I was dreaming about that. Yeah, one <laughs> probably. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, what else to stay on track? What else can make the process smooth for a haul out? You think anything else? No, I think we're just hauling out. Everything. Oh, no one. If you've got strap marks. Oh yeah, sling marks. Sling marks. Very, very handy. Yeah. But if you show up early and we and go you down and picture. look at the boat and you've right. got a picture, we've got that covered. Then you're pretty good. Uh, and Do sling need... marks could be, you know, that could be for another lift. That could be set up for a 50-ton lift, and we can't even span that. Right, right, right. So because all the boats we're getting now just seem to be growing bigger and bigger and bigger. Well, and I'm going to go and buy six more fenders so that I have fenders down both sides. Is that a good idea? Why? Well, because uh, I have to drive. If you into can't that, survive with three to, fenders, I have to drive just into hang that it up. teeny little little slips. You can't have your fenders down when you're coming into the slip. That's what I was fishing for, David. Uh, Did you not notice that? You're God. such an asshole. <laughs> all day, all day. Yeah, you do not need fenders, and I guess. This is 100% true here, and I think it is everywhere because most, because uh, you're driving into the slings, and if you have fenders hanging over the side of your boat, it's going to catch on the slings. So don't put your fenders out. Never. When you're driving in, you just want clean haul. You don't need lines typically. Every boatyard is going to be a little different. So I don't want to say it's the status quo, but at least here and in my experience. Yeah. No lines, no, no, no lines, fenders. No fenders. Come in easy. Come in easy. Not like your hair's on fire. Because that travel lift strap, we can't get it up that fast. I, I mean, know, it's right? half the speed of smell. So you got to come in a little bit easy. Yeah. Give us time to get the straps up. We'll catch you. Well, and pulling in versus reversing in. Is there an option? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Yeah, it depends on the shape of the boat with the uh, force if, stay, the if back you, stay. If the only way radar. to get you in is to d drop the drop the force stay, but it's a deck step mast and there's nothing go else going forward, then you got to back in. True. Or pull your mast. Which we ran into the other day. Yeah. We had actually three boats come in. The first 
two were deck stepped and we couldn't haul them. The third one the was third one keel was just... stepped, but he didn't want to take the mast out. But there was no other way to get it out. Right, right. <clears throat> so we finally convinced him that the only way he was hauling out here was to take the mizzen mast out so he could back in. Yeah. And that's where, again, uh, believe it or not, as dirty as I look, I, you know, as a yard person, <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm not saying that all of the yard guys, somehow I am filthy every day. And Dave looks like he just stepped out of the shower. I don't understand. I guess it's because he's just pointing at the dirty things, telling me to pick them up. But uh, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> essentially, we do know what we're talking about because every day we're hauling another five, six boats. And we do it day after day after day after day. So, you know, you have to trust us. If there is something odd, though, we want to know about it. Definitely. So don't be standoffish. Yeah, come in with a positive attitude like we do. Yeah. <laughs> yes, come in with a positive attitude. Be flexible. Um, and then when you actually do bring your boat in, I would say if you've if you've gotten good service, you know, potentially be ready to, you know, slap a little quiche in the old hand or or drop a, a couple of brewskis off. Not not many yard guys will say no to that, but uh some do. David. Which is uh, a good respectfully thing. Respectfully decline. Respectfully decline, but that doesn't mean a nice what was that? A gift certificate to Duncan? Gift card to Duncan. That's uh, that's pretty nice, right there. I love there. Duncan. Well, you know, I mean, America runs on Duncan, allegedly. Yeah, I don't know if they'd want me even saying that on this podcast. That's you like could, a, that could be copyright infringement. Could be a sponsorship deal in the making. Well, maybe, maybe you could take Duncan around the world. Oh, that would be. I'll tell you what. I've always had Duncan's coffee grounds on the on the boat whenever I do my trips. You might. I like their breakfast there. blend. I make it in a French press. That's the one that you really like when I yeah when you tell me to go make some coffee for you. I saying, ask nicely. Do you, saying, you please make me a coffee? You don't usually just hold your empty cup up and you like jingle it a little. <laughs> well, that's the same thing. I say I it in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think we could kick it up a notch here. I think YouTube some stuff tonight. And we'll put you in the crane to haul your own mast out. No, not a trial by fire chance. You're already going to haul me up there to take the Windex off. I let me do the climbing. I'm the monkey man. And then we do have to video it for the listeners so I can put a video of it up on YouTube. I'll do like a, one of those fast, speedy time lapse ones, but we'll do it with the GoPro. I'll find a good place to set it up and uh, put it on be... top of the box. Okay. Yeah, I well, we got to get like sort of that wide view. You could view. walk off in your bow spread that's out there, forty-two feet. It's not. For... <laughs> well, a hey, question that west sail that's over there, talisman or whatever it is, Taliat, Talisman. He Talisman. was forty-one. His bow spread's off. Oh, he took it off. Yeah. Yeah, we're still gonna bill him. Well, that's not right. Yeah. Keep they keep really that took in it mind, off, listeners, because. You can see how, you know, you can you can say to them, hey, well, I want you to get that measuring tape out right now. <laughs> you can say it. Yeah, and that might not go. Well, and I think to wrap this up, because you've already given me just about 30 minutes, and, and I know it's time to get home to uh, to stricken your children. And... Yeah, I got to go beat the kids. <laughs> Dave loves his kids. He's basically like a giant jungle gym. Oh, my God. <laughs> gotta whoop them into shape oh geez so i'll tell you what your parenting exercise about uh whenever your kids say they're bored is pretty good yeah that's music to my ears it makes it fills my heart i, I must and <clears throat> is that why you keep just a loose pile of wood around your house yeah. at all times yeah <laughs> daddy i'm bored <laughs> that wood pile is oh. just itching for you so Cannot wait. thank you very much for saying those words i'll get, get on there. the phone and order another quart yeah <laughs> yeah now they're good you know your your oldest came in and sold 
lemonade this summer. That was really, really cool. That Made gave, some bracelets. Yeah, that gave, you know, that was a nice little, that's got to be a bit of a reality check because, you know, there are a few days dry, dusty, you don't sell a whole lot. But she kept her chin up pretty yeah. well. Yeah, she stuck it out. Now, out of all of her profits, percentage-wise, how much of it came directly from you buying lemonade? <laughs> well, 40%? Yeah, 30%. Yeah, we're up there. That's what we call a little father subsidizing That's the activity. Right. But hey, you know what? I think it's it really is good. I I can't wait to see what Tanker does eventually. He'll probably uh pick things up and put them down. I have a feeling he'll be the youngest blocking guy we have around here. Yeah, ever. <laughs> um shoot, I had a thing in my head about how to wrap this up as far as the yard information. And now I've I've just completely lost it. Well, probably you need to eat. You're low on carbs. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm low on carbs. There we go. I'm low on burgers and all that stuff. I'm telling you, Dave, vegetables are good for you. I eat vegetables. And you know, so do the cows that I eat. I know, but they you eat know, vegetables too. French fries and potato chips aren't they? That's I, not I don't actually do potato chips. You don't do potato chips. No. What What are you saying are your vegetables? Do you really want to talk about this right yeah, now? All your basics: green beans, green corn, beans, corn, carrots, carrots. Yeah, carrots are good. Now, I just I'd don't like to, do the I don't do the Brussels sprouts. I'd like to get some broccoli. Yeah, broccoli, Broccoli's cauliflower, good. cauliflower is great wonderful. For you. Love it. Mm -hmm. Romaine, spinach, lettuce. spinach. I don't like lettuce. I substitute spinach. Yeah, well, and lettuce. I mean, you know, if you're looking for powerful really good good for you food yeah you know lettuce is pretty light there it's just green and filled with water i yeah, guess it doesn't do much well you know they make these protein not protein but uh green powder so you know you used to do like the creatine protein powder stuff yeah they make that where it's just condensed vegetable stuff you know you just gotta choke that shit down anyway right, right? you just chug it throw in one of those man i got a few in that cabinet right over there Right here? Oh, yeah. Open it up, bud. Uh, should be up top shelf. Uh, green. Yeah, the green things. Look at that. Unopened guy. Greens blend. Superfood. Superfoods. You just chug that down. You know, I will tell you, though, if your body's not used to getting that much. Uh, oh, it'll give you the squirts. It'll give you the squirts the first, yeah, you know, week you do it or whatever. Then your body, because you're basically with that stuff. Part of it is you rebuild your gut biome, all the little bacteria that you love to have. Yeah. Uh, that you need to have. Oh, we got somebody knocking. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's wrap this one up. Yeah. And we'll do. We'll do. You know, I'm sure. Hopefully, we'll we'll get in another one of these again. Uh, Definitely. About some other stuff. But Dave, thank you for uh, for sitting down. Time to get out of here after a hard day's work. I always tell my guests that uh, time is the most precious thing we all actually have. We're yeah. far more valuable than money, cars, trucks, whatever. And uh, for you to spend it on me is great, and I appreciate that. It's my pleasure. You, know, you little scamp. <laughs>